And but we're not comrades on this channel. We are comrades on this channel for Socialism Saturday. And today is an especially apropos Socialism Saturday because we just but an hour ago got done the Communist Manifesto book club. And I got to tell you guys, I hadn't read the Communist Manifesto, I'm pretty sure, since college. And I had forgotten about so many of the things that it said. If you have not recently read the Communist Manifesto, might I suggest that you give it a perusal? Because so many of the things that showed up in the Communist Manifesto are exactly the same things that we see in these, not only in these socialism videos that we watch, but also on Happy Hour. We see things from the Communist Manifesto showing up in, in classroom curriculum during the school investigation streams. And I'm not talking about just a subtle illusion. I'm, su I'm saying the, the 1619 Project comes from here. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Because guess what? There are there are there are entire paragraphs in the Communist Manifesto where if you just replace the word capital with whiteness, you get the 1619 project and that's not an exaggeration. So, might I recommend that everyone, you don't have to pay for it or anything. It's free on the internet. You can find it for free. But Please, please, please read the Communist Manifesto. Please. It will give you so much more insight into what's going on. And let me just let me just um, read to you a portion. And this is from Chapter 2, Proletarians and Communists. This is directly from the Communist Manifesto. Abolition of the family. Even the most radical flare-up at this infamous proposal of the Communists. On what foundation is the present family, the bourgeois family, based? On capital, on private gain. It is completely developed for, for it is it's in its excuse me, in its completely developed form. This family exists only among the bourgeoisie. But this state of things finds its complement in the practical absence of the family among the proletarian and in public prostitution. The bourgeois family will vanish as a matter of course when its complement vanishes, and both will vanish within the vanishing of capital. Do you charge us with wanting to stop the exploitation of children by their parents? To this crime, we plead guilty. But you will say we destroyed the most hallowed of relations when we replace home, education, by social. In the Communist Manifesto, they call for abolition of the family. And that's why tonight we are returning to one of my favorite topics for Socialism Saturday. Some might say this is the topic that got me started on Socialism Saturday. And we are watching from our favorite new YouTube channel, Red May. This is different than the ones we've watched before. We are watching a session about abolishing the family and a couple of people that we have seen before will show up in this session. Of course, we know so Sophie Lewis. Sophie here has written not one but two books about abolishing the family. And so Sophie's, um, so Sophie's position is that all children in society should be bo born via surrogacy. So we can finally rid ourselves of the ties of the biological family. Now, in what other uh, forms of dystopian fiction have we heard of all children being born via surrogacy? Well, that was in 1984. They called it Artsem. And the whole point of the Junior Anti-Sex League in 1984 was to get rid of the orgasm. And so women won't want to have sex. And so there would be no more procreation because women will refuse to have sex and all children would be born via artificial ins uh, artificial insemination. They called it Artsem. Yes, Logan's Run has all people born via surrogacy, which is a great movie, by the way. And we should all we should watch that movie for movie night. We're going to talk about movie night in a second. Brave New World, all children born via surrogacy. Everyone belongs to everyone else, but there are no families. 
but everyone belongs to everyone else. Basically, every dystopian book ever has the abolition of the biological family. So this is what I decided that we were going to watch today in relation to our little discussion that we just had in my uh, in my community about the Communist Manifesto, because this is genuinely one of the most wacky topics I have I have ever heard people talk about. And so I thought that you guys might enjoy it. That's what we got up on Socialism Saturday. Socialism Saturday is a time when we watch real socialists, real communists. We're not talking about CNN socialism here, guys. We're not talking about the things that the conservatives would re about and saying, oh, you're a socialist. No, no, no. What, what, the, what, the, what the conservatives think is socialism? I mean, I'm not saying it's not socialism or anything. It usually is a form of it, but it's not the worst form of it. On Socialism Saturday, we watch the furthest of the far left in their full form. Because the other thing about the Communist Manifesto is that it flat out tells people you should not be quiet about your ideas. You need to tell people overtly what you want to do. And that's why these people act with such hubris. Because it's literally in their guiding documents. I cannot believe I didn't read this earlier again. I mean, I, again, I read it in college, but I hadn't read it since then. And, and you have a completely different perception of it before you have a job and are in the real world than after you have a job and are in the real world. I'll tell you what. Please read this, guys. Don't assume you know what it says. It is very short. It takes maybe a couple hours to read. It's it's much more readable than you might think it is. Like, please read this. You need to understand where their ideas come from. Because then you're going to be able to explain it to people. That's why we watch Socialism Saturday, to really understand what their ideas are. And that way, once we understand what their ideas are, we can really pick apart how it's showing up when it gets into the mainstream. And every single Socialism Saturday, we see how their ideas are showing up in the mainstream. Because whether we like it or not, these people are winning. These people are winning. These people own every major institution in the country. They have control of every major institution, including the schools that are educating your children. So no matter how wacky you think these people are, no matter how much you might want to dismiss them, no matter how much you might want to say, Carlin, I just can't watch this stuff. I just can't. It's just too hard. If you abdicate your responsibility in understanding what these people think and what they believe and the fact that they are currently winning and not by a little bit, they're kicking all of our asses, then you deserve to lose. I'm sorry. I'm not going to coddle people anymore. Like, I'm sitting here watching this stuff, learning this stuff. I don't necessarily like doing this. Guess what? I'm like a week and a half behind on my mystery knit along shawl. There are things I'd rather be doing, guys. But we watch this stuff because we need to watch this stuff. We watch this stuff because it's a little bit more bearable as a group activity. That's what Socialism Saturday is all about. And yes, Bot, to your question earlier, I am drinking. I'm drinking a so strawberry sour ale because I thought it would be redder than this. I wanted a good red beer for today. But it is a strawberry sour earl ale called Little Bunny Foo Foo. And we'll see how it is. I haven't even taken a sip of it yet. 